Cohasset is a seaside community that is located approximately 24 miles south of Boston. Now the town today has about 8,000 residents and is known for its picturesque setting, which includes scenic harbor views and several parks and beaches, as well as a downtown that hasn't lost its historic roots. Cohasset's Gold Coast is some of the most premier real estate in Massachusetts with some of the most breathtaking views. And in this video, we're going to be talking about everything Cohasset has to offer and what makes the town so special, from landmarks to recreational areas. We're also going to talk about the commute, schools, housing, and restaurants. We're going to cover it all here. And be sure to stick around until the end when we will talk brass tacks about Cohasset. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent that sold more than a thousand houses, and I'm one of the state's top real estate agents. To learn more about real estate, then don't forget to click that like and subscribe button below. And if you want to talk about your own personal real estate needs, then I invite you to reach out as I love talking about real estate. Now, what makes Cohasset special is that Cohasset is a waterfront community with a scenic harbor as well as that historic downtown. I think Cohasset is best known for its coastline, which includes its beaches. Now, Cohasset has two beaches. It's Sandy Beach and Black Rock Beach, otherwise known as Rocky Beach. And you'd be very surprised to find out that Sandy Beach is, well, Sandy and Rocky Beach is Rocky. They are public beaches, but you must be a resident of Cohasset in order to use them. Now, Cohasset has a beautiful coastline. A slow drive down Jerusalem Road to Atlantic will give you some of the most scenic views that Cohasset has to offer, and eventually that winding road will lead you to the scenic harbor. Now, the harbor is currently going through a revitalization that will offer a harbor walk, more retail and restaurants, as well as some new condos. Today, the harbor boasts the Cohasset Yacht Club, Cohasset Sailing Club, Cohasset Harbor Marina, and the Cohasset Maritime Institute, which was founded in 2004 and is a nonprofit organization that educates students about the history and culture of the maritime community. Now, the Yacht Club and Sailing Club offer sailing activities for youth members to adults, while the Yacht Club and Cohasset Harbor Marina Marina offer docks for members with boats. And if the water isn't your thing, then that's okay because Cohasset offers a lot of green space. It starts with Barnes Wildlife Sanctuary and Wheelwright Park. It's 232 acres that's owned by the town and offers miles of hiking and walking trails, picnic sites, an ice skating pond, and a Boy Scouts campground. Then there's Wampatock State Park, which spans 3,526 acres, offering an over 250 site campground, 12 miles of non-motorized roads, and 40 miles of forest trails. Now, Wampatock is a large park that is actually part of Hingham and Cohasset, the main entrance being in Hingham and the Cohasset entrance being by the commuter rail stop. Then there's Whitney and Thayer Woods. This is another park shared by Hingham and Cohasset and is 824 acres of woodland with 10 miles of trails. And when it comes to commuting to Boston and Cohasset, then you may want to take a look at a map. They are a little off the beaten path, so commuting by car can cause premature graying in your hair. You'll either head out to Route 3 cutting through Hingham or you'll skirt up 3A and go through Quincy where you're going to land yourself at the bottleneck, otherwise known as Naponza Bridge, and give yourself an hour or maybe a little more depending on where in Boston you're headed. But a lot of residents utilize the MBTA for their commute, with there being a train stop in town. Now the commuter rail will take you directly into Boston, drop you at South Station. The favorite commuting option for many residents is to head over to the shipyard in Hingham and take the ferry in. Now the ferry drops you at Rose Wharf, and as a bonus, it has a bar for that ride home. Just don't have too much fun. You're spouse will get jealous. So where to live? Keep in mind, these are areas aren't exactly official, but here we go. People don't exactly call them these. And if you were to call them up and say, hey, I'm looking in North Cohasset, not going to work for you. But it gives you an idea for geographic placement. There's North Cohasset, which is the border of Hingham Hall, South Cohasset, which borders situate. Now, North and South Main Street kind of dictates that one. There's the Cohasset Village area, which would extend to the harbor. And then the section of town across 3A that borders Hingham and Norwell is the Lily Pond or Beachwood area. And I guess I just have to throw in the waterfront area that goes along Jerusalem Road and Atlantic Avenue. Like I said earlier, there really isn't anything official about these areas. Cohasset has four public schools, the Joseph Oswood School, Deer Hill, Cohasset Middle, and Cohasset High School. Now, U.S. News has Cohasset High School ranked as the 31st school in the state and 783rd in the nation, with Boston Magazine ranking it at number 38 in the state. And according to Boston Magazine, 
Total enrollment was 1448 uh, for the whole school. Students had grades from pre-K to 12th grade with an average class size of 15 and a student to teacher ratio of 10.8 to one. Now the graduation rate was 100% with 82.7% of students attending college. Housing in Cohasset is mostly single family homes and you can find some condos, but they're gonna be few and far in between. There's a good mix of older homes and newer homes with many different styles of architecture through this seaside town. And when many think of Cohasset, they think of the big luxury waterfront properties. While there are many of these properties, it's important to know that there are a lot of normal houses in town as well. Now the entry level price to Cohasset is one of the higher ones in the state due to its proximity to the water and good schools, so be prepared to bring your checkbook. Because prices tend to change, I just felt it best to put that average sales price in the description section below. This way, I can update it from time to time. Okay, so let's talk about restaurants and all the things to do in town. We've already talked about the beaches, which are a lot of fun, so bring your bathing suit and be prepared to do some swimming as well as a lot of relaxing. We also already have talked about all the parks that Cohasset has to offer so here are a couple good restaurants that are worth checking out now Bia Bistro is an amazing spot with the owner chef Brian Hulohan creating quite a following that offers fine foods with a large patio for those warmer months and there's the corner stop eatery the restaurants located at the west corner where Hingham and Hall and Cohasset come together now the space is large and it's a beautiful space all while serving modern American food the old sod house is the only restaurant currently open that is on the harbor they they have a small interior space with a huge patio door during those summer months. Now the Old Salt House is owned by the same people that own the Red Lion Tavern, which is a large and stunning restaurant with old wide planked hardwood floors and multiple fireplaces. It's a beautiful place to eat. And the Blue War is the new kid on the block um, that offer patrons a casual, warm and welcome neighborhood spot. And if you're looking to grab breakfast, maybe check out the Atlantic Bagel or as well as the new spot, the Barrel. Now you can also get deli made sandwiches at the Barrel as well. Great, great, great little convenience store. After you eat, then you might want to stop by Holly Hill Farm, which is a nonprofit farm uh, with an educational mission. Now they are a working farm that also serves the community, helping connect children and teens with nature. They also have a farm stand in the summer, which is great to check out. If golfing's your thing, then you're in luck as Cohasset has the Cohasset Golf Club, which was established in 1894 and is one of the oldest private clubs in New England. It offers members a challenging 18 holes plus tennis and paddle tennis. And in the summer, there's the Cohasset Farmer's Market on Thursdays, on the Common with fresh fruits and vegetables, as well as some local vendors. The Common is also home to the Arts Festival. Speaking of art, the South Shore Arts Center also calls Cohasset home, where they feature galleries as well as teaching studios. Then there's the South Shore Music Circus, which has attracted world-class entertainers and a rotating outdoor theater. This is one of the most amazing venues you could watch a live show from, and is actually only one of two continually operated tent theaters in the United States, the other one being in the Cape. And back to the bathing suits. If you aren't an ocean guy, then there is always the Cohasset Swim Center, which is a community pool for residents of Cohasset and surrounding towns. It's a great spot to learn how to swim and has a swim and dive team water aerobics and also hosts family nights. So to get down to brass tacks, what's Cohasset all about? Cohasset, it's not a cheap place to live. If one of the more expensive communities in Massachusetts, it's expensive because it offers its residents a lot from a picturesque historic downtown, a scenic harbor, beaches, a gold coastline, and some of the top schools in the state as well as the country. For an 8,000 resident town, it packs a big punch, and I think that's what it's all about. It's a small town feel, but without that sleepy small town feeling. If you're looking to learn more about Cohasset, as well as other Boston suburb communities, then be sure to check out the channel, but also know that I'm always happy to talk to you about all the different communities that Massachusetts has to offer. And if you're thinking about buying or selling in Cohasset and looking for a Cohasset realtor, then I would love the opportunity to chat. You can reach me at 617-480-2600 or by email at jeff at boston2.com. Until next time.